With a runtime clocking in at over three hours, it might be easier to explain what doesn't happen in Avengers Endgame instead of what does. For instance, fans don't get bored, fans don't get up to use the bathroom, and fans don't ever want it to end, but it did end, and we're here to explain what that ending was all about. Here's the ending of Avengers Endgame explained, with lots of spoilers ahead. After returning from their various missions to different past moments from the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the Avengers grouped back up with the six Infinity Stones in tow. But Black Widow was missing, as she sacrificed herself to retrieve the Soul Stone. It all goes down in a scene that mirrored the death of Gamora in Avengers Infinity War. The new and improved Professor Hulk, who has the combined might of the Hulk with the intellect of Bruce Banner, used the recreated Infinity Gauntlet to reverse Thanos' snap, bringing back all the people who are erased from existence in Avengers Infinity War. But though he tried, he couldn't return Natasha to life. It may seem weird that a guy with an all-powerful wishing glove still couldn't undo this one major death, but Black Widow's absence at the end of the film proves that the Infinity Stones aren't quite as infinite as their name would suggest. Of course, that doesn't mean our heroes can't find a way to pluck her out of the past and send her… BACK TO THE FUTURE! Okay, so here's where things get weird. On their trip back to 2014 to get the Power Stone, seen in the beginning of Guardians of the Galaxy, our timeline's Nebula was captured by Thanos, who secretly replaced her with the evil 2014 version of Nebula. Having infiltrated the Avengers headquarters, evil Nebula then summoned 2014 Thanos and his armies using the time machine. They blew everything up, with evil Nebula getting a hold of the new Infinity Gauntlet in a callback to the original comics. But then the good Nebula from the real timeline shot her younger evil self stone dead. Luckily, this didn't affect the good nebula at all. So what does that mean? It proves that heroes' pasts can't be changed, and that alternate universes are probably something the MCU is going to need to sort out in Phase 4. With the Infinity Gauntlet once again in play, the Avengers fought Thanos to a standstill, including an absolutely epic sequence where Captain America gained the powers of Thor by wielding the mystic hammer Mjolnir to deliver a massive whooping something which was first teased way back in Avengers Age of Ultron. Still, Thanos eventually called in the cavalry, by which we mean the intergalactic horde of creeps we saw back in Avengers Infinity War. Luckily, the Hulk's reverse snap had also restored all the dusted heroes from Avengers Infinity War. Just as Captain America was about to face the armies of Thanos alone, again echoing a classic moment from the comics, all the dead heroes arrived via Doctor Strange's magic portals in a scene reminiscent of the end of Ready Player One, only better. Plus, the arrival of all the heroes allowed Captain America to finally deliver the team's signature catchphrase from the comics, Avengers Assemble, something fans have been waiting for for the last decade, especially after Marvel did a freak-out tease at the end of Age of Ultron. Avengers! In the end, you knew it had to come down to Tony Stark vs. Thanos for the fate of the universe. After all, the showdown had been teased way back in Avengers Age of Ultron, and luckily Tony was clued in to his big chance because Doctor Strange was there to give him the finger. No, not that finger. Just an index finger to note that this was the one chance in 14 million for victory that he had foreseen in Avengers Infinity War. Stark didn't disappoint, taking the Infinity Stones from Thanos and using it to snap the big purple meanie out of existence along with all his minions. We learned in Guardians of the Galaxy see that mere mortals cannot harness the power of the Infinity Stones, though. Fulfilling that cosmic promise, the strain was too much for Tony. He died a hero, and was given a hero's funeral attended by everyone who was anyone, including Nick Fury and even that kid from Iron Man 3. As for why it had to be Tony who saved the day and bit the dust, well, he's the guy who started the whole MCU back with the first Iron Man movie. He's been the heart and soul of the franchise, and without Tony making the ultimate sacrifice to save the universe, it just wouldn't feel right. He may be gone, but he will never be forgotten. I I am Iron Man. Following Tony's funeral, Captain America was tasked with returning the Infinity Stones to their proper places and time, in order to ensure that no more alternate universes were created. But in a big twist, Cap decided not to come back from his time travel jaunt. Instead, he returned to the 1940s so he could finally have that dance he promised Peggy Carter back in Captain America, the first Avenger. And then he stayed there, apparently marrying her and living a long and full life. You're gonna need a rain check on that dance. A week next Saturday at the Stork Club. So Steve Rogers at least got a happy ending, and so did his buddy Sam Wilson, aka the Falcon. Not only was he brought back to life, but an old Steve Rogers, still spry at well over 100, turned up to present Sam with this indestructible shield and the charge to carry on as the new Captain America, a development that also took place in the comics several years ago. Tony and Steve might be gone, but one of the big three may apparently still be moving forward in the MCU. After wallowing in self-pity throughout the whole film, Thor finally seemed to get his act together at the very end and decided to head into space with the Guardians of the Galaxy, leaving Valkyrie behind as the new leader of the Asgardians. 
We also got a hint of what we might see when Thor and the Asgardians of the Galaxy return in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, as their final scene showed Peter Quill searching for the location of the 2014 version of Gamora, who came through the portal with Thanos but vanished after the final battle. But that's just one of several loose ends Marvel will have to tie up in future movies. We won't have to wait long to see the fallout from Avengers Endgame, as the teasers for Spider-Man Far From Home suggest Peter Parker and Happy Hogan will be dealing in very different ways with the loss of Tony Stark. They aren't the only ones with things to work through, though. After stealing the Tesseract again, Loki got a second chance at life that seems likely to be explored in the upcoming Loki series on Disney's new streaming service, Disney+. Likewise, Hawkeye has his family back, which is likely to be explored in the upcoming Hawkeye series on the same service. Meanwhile, Wakanda suddenly has its king back, again. Again. That's probably one king too many though, because whoever's been running the show for the last five years in T'Challa's absence, Umbaku maybe, might not want to just hand the throne back over. And then there's Black Widow, who has a solo film in development, even though she's dead. Will the heroes rebuild a time machine to bring her back? Will the film be a prequel? Will we find out she was a life model decoy this whole time? So many possibilities. All told, the Avengers saved a lot of lives and won the day. But that was the easy part. Picking up the pieces is likely to be the hard part, and we can't wait for Phase 4 to begin so we can see just how they do it. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite Marvel movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.